Hello guys and girls and welcome back to my Dark Souls 2 series. So right here we left off in Majula. We just finished getting our SS flask, in which I'm gonna equip right now before I forget. And on the last episode we just went through the through the tutorial. Nothing too fancy, nothing too spectacular. Well, I thought it was spectacular, but I mean nothing like mega major awesome happened. Anyways, if you, we're going to talk to her a little bit because she seems to be kind of our guide through this whole uh, area, or through the game. Bearer of the curse, for misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Seek, though, their souls once you have found them. Return here to me, so that hope will not fade away. Bearer of the curse, seek souls, larger, more powerful souls. Seek the king, that is the only way, lest this land swallow you whole, as it has so many others. Whoa, deep. That's some deep stuff. And we can level up. Uh, now, I'm not sure what I'm going to level up, actually, because I have no idea what kind of character I'm going to try making. So I'm going to level up my... Oh, I can level up once. Okay, that's cool. Level, level up my Endurance, because Endurance is always good. Alrighty then, so let's check out the city, shall we? Majula. I mean, I'm... Like, if you just look at this, if you just take a second, take it all in... Wow, this looks amazing. Just breathtaking. There are almost 4 million deaths in Dark Souls worldwide. That's awesome. to break the curse here. Well, that's not true at all. There's nothing here for you, me, or anybody. Wow. Do you know not really. About souls? Even I'm not certain, but I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth, that's the real curse right there. We undead will never die. And that's Quite a predicament, really. This guy is so depressing. He reminds me... Like, his voice just reminds me of the Crestfallen Warrior from Dark Souls 1. There are four beings in this land with giant souls. And wherever you go from here, you will sooner or later come up against them. Each has a powerful soul. And a terrible curse. If that frightens you, then you ought to just give up right now. Like I have. <laughs> okay. Do you ever cry out for help? The journey of an undead is long and treacherous. You 
will face invaders from other worlds at every turn. If you need help, why not proclaim faith in the Blue Sentinels? When you face danger, the Blue Sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You would only accept their kind embrace. Join the way of the blue, sure. That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the blue sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the sentinels cradle you in their embrace. Okay, so, uh, I have a confession to make. I was thinking of doing a blind LP, but yesterday at night, so it was like around like 10 p.m. till probably like around almost 4 a.m., I played Dark Souls because I got really addicted and I just couldn't stop playing. It was so much fun. So, I actually completed the first three bosses. But, um, I think as of now, I'm probably just going to play on this character and I will record anything I play on this character, or I'll record any content on this character that I play. So, I think after the first three bosses, or the first three bosses I faced, I'm not sure if, you know, those are the actual first three bosses, but... Hello. Welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morlin, and I, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry. I. Please do have a look at my wares. I could really use the business. What? What? Some... What? What? Why do you stutter? I I don't get it. Why does he stutter? Anyways, we can't afford any of this, so. Well, maybe you should lower your prices if you want to see me later. Alrighty, so right here, I actually found this by myself, but if you actually whack this stone, it drops, it, or it drops into the well and you get this Estus Floss Shard. You don't want to go back there. Nah, you don't want to do that. Alrighty then. So, I'm just collecting a few items that I've been able to find. There's probably more, but you know me. I'm actually there is one more I can think of off the top of my head, and it's over here. And it's a solo of a dealess. Soldier plus a life gem. So we're up to 12 life gems. That's, that's snazzy. Now before we talk to him, we picked up a Estus bone shard or something like that. I hear something moving. Oh god. You vile pig demons. Oh, you saw that attack? I hit like all three of them with that one attack. Felt really nice. I'm focusing on this one because it's almost dead, and I'm not sure if it's just if it's just me or you know they're actually like this. But I have a hard time hitting these guys, and I need to S this because this, these three little piggies are gonna kill me. They're like demon children. Where's the where's the big bad wolf when you need him, right? Bam, bam, bam. So yeah, uh, I'm actually gonna play through the game like I played through it the first time. So I'll be going through the same areas and yada yada. All right. So now that we've taken care of that, like I was saying, 
we ha we got this uh this Estus Blast shard, a shard of the Estus Blast shards that are deeply soaked in Estus. Grafted the shard to the Estus Blast to increase Estus uses. Over the ages, countless souls have rested their bones as they drank from the original flask, and now the shard remains, serving as a vest vestal or vestige of their hopes and dreams. So, in short, you can use it to upgrade your Estus. And right now, we only have one Estus use. So, no, I do not want to level up. Uh, upgrade Estus. Yes. And, bam. Now we have two uses on our Estus instead of just one. I know it says one right there, but it's because I used one prior. Alrighty then. So with this, let's move on to the next area. Now, the first... My, on my first playthrough, I actually went down this way. I'm not sure if this is the easier of the routes, but I didn't find it too difficult. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still died. Like, I... On my playthrough, I probably have around, like, maybe, like, six deaths already. Which is a lot compared to... How much I usually die. So, if you make your way through here, you can pull that lever. And this lever is actually going to lead you to the next area, so. Now, I can't wait to start recording this game blind because I have a lot of, like, mixed emotions about that. Like, I'm like, oh, this is pretty. I walk over here and then I'm like, I'm lost. I don't know where anything is. And, and such. I think it'll just make for more interesting content because I think a blind let or like playthrough is better than one that a person's already played through. So you could come and make this jump right here. It's funny because one of my deaths were actually was just actually falling into that. It's just like BAM I I tried jumping and I didn't jump and since I didn't jump I fell into that lake and that lake is apparently bottomless. So, it cost me my life. Big whoop. Big deal. So, here we feed- or I think this is a familiar enemy that we've seen already. I think they're hollowed infantry. And they're actually really easy. Just block their first attack and you could uh, combo them for, for a kill. So, right here we have our first bonfire of the area. We're gonna light this. Alrighty. So let's move. Wait, I wanna sit at it. Right? I think I wanna sit at it. Oh, I cannot use the bonfire. Why not? Where the hell did you come from? There's one thing that, that like, just kind of uh, stood out to me. Like, one of the changes that uh, Dark Souls 2 has over, you know, its counterpart in Dark Souls 1 is that I seem to be getting, like, surprise attacked a lot more. Like, I would be in an area and I go to a chest and then all of a sudden there's this enemy behind me. Now, I kind of understand what or why that is now. But it's still it's still it, it feels really weird just going into an area and then like picking up an item and then having you know um, having an enemy get the drop on you. It it really is I got shot in the face with an arrow. Arrow face. Arrow head. Ha! Good joke. Whoa, I thought you you were dead, like, honestly. Okay, let's take care of him. We're gonna take care of this archer up here, because he's being a mega asshole. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an instance where, like, I was like, okay, like, how the hell did this enemy, like, attack me? Because I was like, this I killed everyone. Okay, so I killed everyone in the area. There's that item over there. So if you just walk past... I picked up this item, and suddenly there's this guy right here. Now if you notice, 
or if you want to wind back like a few seconds, this guy was actually just laying on the floor right here. Like if he was dead, like if it was just part of the scenery. But as soon as you walk past him, he actually attacks you. Now, that caught me off guard. And that's something that happens almost throughout the game. In my, or if I remember correctly, which I probably don't because I have like, I don't know what time is this, like 9 a.m. here. I went to bed like around like 4, so I have 5 hours of sleep, so I'm still quite tired. So. Now I'm gonna collect these items broken straight sword, that's fantastic. Human effigy, useful. Life gem, good. Alright, before. I am gonna come back and I am gonna kill him. Now, but before, there's an archer up there who just. I mean, he's, he's a sniper. He's just like, I'm going to get some headshots on you, and you're not going to like it. I'm going to make your life so much more difficult just by being up here and shooting down on your battle. Okay, that guy almost hit me. I don't appreciate that, sir. You don't see me swinging my weapons around. Well, yeah, you do, but it's because they're hostile, right? Like, it's self-defense, not... I'm not assaulting them. They're assaulting me. If, you know, if we could do this peacefully and I can just, like, walk by you, then I'd have no problem. So, yeah, there's this asshole up here. You see how high he is? And he just, like, shoots down at you. And he's the guy that... Was he the guy? Oh, no. I got headshotted in the last area by that other archer who was also an asshole. Like, don't don't think he's not an asshole. He's, he's definitely an asshole. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like jumping is so much easier in this game, and I'm not sure if they wanted to make it easier, or if, like, the jump button was just too difficult for other people to use, so they're just like, oh, we need to, you know, find a better way to do it. I'm not sure. Anyways, and with that, we could come down here. I'm gonna pop a life gem to restore my lost HP, and let's try taking this guy out. Now, this guy is actually really hard. I think I died to him at least once on my first playthrough. Now, what I noticed that he, is that his attack pattern is just so, like, unorthodox. Like, sometimes he'll just stand there and then he'll swing at you, like, really, really fast. Like, out of nowhere. Like that. You saw that? Like, how I hit him in the back and then I, like immediately like rolled back to dodge that quick swing of his and there again he just he's just swinging like a wild man now I want to get a backstab on him because that's how I did most of my damage last time bro roll, roll okay okay I'm good I'm good not really he's like half health I'm like half health I'm gonna pop a S or not a S this I'm gonna pop a life gem there you go but you see how quick he like just like came at me and closed that gap. It's ridiculous. Okay. Well, that life gem went to waste. Now he's gonna attack me really suddenly. You see? I don't know. I just find it really weird. Or maybe it's just me because you know I'm so used to all the enemies in Dark Souls. Like none of them really surprise me. I know all their attacks. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take this time to S this. And you know what? I'm just gonna. Instead of fishing for a backstab, I'm just gonna. Fight him like an, I would any other enemy. Yeah, just, uh. This is how I fight. I take a hit. And hopefully dodge. And not make a fool of myself. Broadsword at risk? What? And where the hell did you come from, sir? Sir. I don't appreciate you. Okay, that's not good. It's really not good that... Amori, like... My broad... Why is my broadsword breaking? I didn't have any trouble with my weapon on my first playthrough, like, trying to break on me. Alrighty. So that has 120. So what weapon should I use? Nah. 
Alright, we're sticking with the broadsword. Hopefully it doesn't break on us. I'm not sure how close the next bonfire is, actually. So I'm kind of worried. I know you're there. Like so. I know that there's a guy in here. Oh, two guys. I don't remember two guys, but... Two guys, one room? Three guys, one room. Well, I'm a, well my character is a girl, so... It's broken. Oh my god. My sword broke, and now I'm doing no damage to it. Nada. Do I have anything? Do I, do I have... I know my other character, I was able to pick up some repair powder from somewhere, so... I was wondering if I had any repair powder. I'm not gonna fight you with this fucking broken sword. Back up. Okay, seems like you don't care. That's cool. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's nice. Alright, so I need to back up. I need to heal. I need to equip a different weapon, because my weapon's apparently really shitty, and... Wow. Oh. Okay. He, like, almost killed me. He almost killed me and just backed off. Like, he's like, Consider your life spared. And I'm like, You're such an asshole. No one likes you. They told me. Well, it does more damage than my broken broadsword, so... I totally guard break broke him. There you go. Oh my god. Can I finish him? Can I finish him? Yes! Your souls are mine! Okay. Oh wait. Oh, that's broken. So, I wonder. I know when you sit down on a bonfire, it repairs your, your weapons. But I've never had a weapon actually break on me, so I'm wondering... If having a broken weapon if having whoa 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 oh and now you're gonna start shooting at me from far away thanks thanks buddy you're not invited to my next party so if you don't get that invitation don't ask why alrighty let's kill this guy no, actually, let's get out of here, like, so. Because there's an asshole, and by asshole, I'm pointing at you, sir. I'm pointing at him. He's just, like, throwing, like, these fire... Well, they are fire bombs. They're not like fire bombs. How the hell did I get hit from down here? I mean, up here. You, my sir. Ah, uh, I hate hitting the wall. That's, like, the worst thing in Dark Souls, like... I just hate hitting those walls. Because they take off so much of your stamina, and then it just kind of disrupts the flow of the of the match. Like, once you hit that wall, you're just like, fuck, I hit the wall. And and you, you honestly, it's like a psychological thing. Like, it's like, oh, I hit the wall. And, like, you kind of give your excuse a reason to, like, play bad or something like that. Anyways. I wonder what... Well, I know where the next bonfire is from here, but... Is it... I think it's right here? Maybe? I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna get this item right quick. Let me see it. See how this guy is just, like, laying down? Pretending to be dead? Well, guess what? He's not dead, and he's an asshole. Just like everyone else in this game. Like, I heard that Dark Souls 2 was gonna be easier than Dark Souls 1, but I don't really agree. I think... Dark Souls 2 has done a great job in making the game difficult in its own right. So, let's head through these doors. And a bonfire! Praise the bonfire! Alrighty. So with that, I want to check my broadsword. It's still broken. Great. So what we're gonna have to do is actually... Oh, 
Okay, you're freaking me out, lady. So oh, apparently they're giants. So you must have like horrible back problems because carrying that cannot be healthy in any way, shape, or form. So right here we're going to buy this key. It's called the Lenny Grass Key Opens Blacksmith's Shop in Majula. And I'm going to end the episode here. So if you liked the episode, make sure to like and or favorite the video. Leave me some comments down below. And if you want to see more of my Dark Souls series, make sure to subscribe to my channel. So, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Bye!